Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa received a congratulatory cable from His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, on the advent of the holy month of Ramadan. In the cable, His Royal Highness wished His Majesty the King continued health and happiness and Bahrain and its people for the progress and prosperity. His Majesty the King sent a reply cable to His Royal Highness, thanking him for his cable and appreciating his noble sentiments, wishing him to continued health and happiness. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a congratulatory cable from His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, on the advent of the holy month of Ramadan. In the cable, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince wished His Majesty the King continued health and happiness and Bahrain and its people for their progress and prosperity. His Majesty the King sent a reply cable to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, thanking him for his cable and appreciating his noble sentiments, wishing him continued health and happiness. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa exchanged congratulations and held telephone calls with various leaders, Crown Princes and Prime Ministers on the advent of the holy month of Ramadan, wishing them abundant health and many happy returns. His Majesty the King exchanged good wishes on the occasion with the King of Morocco, Mohammed VI, the President of Iraq, Baham Saleh, the Kuwaiti Crown Prince, His Highness Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jaba Al Sabah, and the Prime Minister of Iraq, Mustafa Al Khatimi. They exchanged good wishes on the holy month of Ramadan wishing the countries and peoples, as well as the Arab and Islamic nations, further growth and prosperity. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received a cable of good wishes from His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, on the advent of the holy month of Ramadan. In his cable, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince wished His Royal Highness the Prime Minister continued health and happiness and Bahrain and its people further progress and prosperity. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister sent a reply cable to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, thanking him for his sentiments, wishing him continued health and happiness. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, exchanged congratulations with various leaders, Crown Princes and Prime Ministers on the advent of the holy month of Ramadan, wishing them abundant health and many happy returns. He exchanged good wishes on the holy month of Ramadan, wishing the countries and peoples, as well as the Arab and Islamic nations, further growth and prosperity. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, exchanged congratulations with various leaders, Crown Princes and Prime Ministers on the advent of the holy month of Ramadan, wishing them abundant health and many happy returns. He exchanged good wishes on the holy month of Ramadan, wishing the countries and peoples, as well as the Arab and Islamic nations, further growth and prosperity. The Secretary General of the Supreme Council for Women, the SCW, Hala Al Ansari, participated in the regional meeting for national mechanisms and official bureaus in the Arab region on the effects of the coronavirus pandemic on women, which was organised by the Economic and Social Commission for Western Asia of the United Nations and was attended by ministers and senior officials. Al Ansari affirmed the importance of exchanging expertise and carrying out the best practices in terms of the Arab state's fulfilment of the needs of women and families in light of the pandemic, with the objective of addressing all necessary adjustments as soon as possible. She said that these novel circumstances require innovative solutions in order to ensure the continuation of daily life. She said that Bahrain is carrying out these responsibilities through the efforts of the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus COVID-19 which made the Kingdom among the most highly ranked countries in terms of dealing with the pandemic and containing it. Al Ansari said that Bahrain addressed the concerns of public health at the earliest opportunity through forming a national task force by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, who remains at the forefront of implementing this national strategy as per His Majesty the King's directives through a series of policies, services and initiatives in all fields. Al Ansari also discussed the efforts of the SCW as directed by Her Royal Highness the wife of His Majesty the King, President of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Abika bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa, to take all necessary measures to address all challenges that are faced by Bahraini women, personally as well as professionally. She added that electronic services have played a role in serving the needs of the Bahraini women and their families. 
She concluded by affirming the importance of the UN's efforts in documenting the successful cases and sharing their experiences with other countries through which the cause of women's empowerment may be served across the world. On the occasion of the advent of the holy month of Ramadan, the chairman and members of the Sunni Endowments Directorate expressed congratulations to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Imam bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The Directorate also congratulated the people of Bahrain and the national cadres on the Bahrain team on the advent of the holy month. The Directorate also noted the importance of all worshippers to adhere to the instructions and precautionary measures issued by the official authorities in the Kingdom of Bahrain to limit the spread of the coronavirus. The Friday prayer and sermon was held at Al-Fatah Grand Mosque today and that was performed by a limited number of worshippers who wore their masks and were under the supervision of health authorities. This comes in light of the Royal Directive of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa following a consultation with the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs as well as the recommendations of the national medical team combating coronavirus COVID-19. Clerics laud at the Royal Directive of His Majesty the King which spreads comfort for resuming the Friday prayers. The custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz al Saud, wished citizens and Muslims around the world a blessed Ramadan after the Kingdom's Supreme Court announced the sighting of the crescent moon. A statement was delivered on his behalf by the Minister of Information in Charge, Dr. Majid bin Abdullah al Qasabi. In a statement, King Salman said that Muslims are entering Ramadan this year while living in extraordinary circumstances that have impacted all of humanity. King Salman also expressed his sadness at the fact that Muslims will not be able to pray inside mosques due to the restrictions imposed in several countries to curb the pandemic. He thanked the security personnel, as well as health practitioners, security and military sector personnel, everyone working in the government sector and all volunteers for the efforts in helping curb the virus outbreak. In other news, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia reported seven new deaths and 1,158 new cases of the coronavirus in the last 24 hours, bringing the total number of cases in the Kingdom to 13,930. The spokesman for the Ministry of Health said, the total number of virus-related deaths in the country stands at 121. A 69-year-old Saudi woman died of the coronavirus in Jeddah, as well as six other non-Saudi nationals in Jeddah and Mecca. They were between the ages of 23 and 67 years old and most suffered from chronic illnesses. Saudi citizens make 15% and non-Saudi residents make up 85% of the newly reported cases. The Saudi presidency of the group of 20 major economies called for further immediate donations to fund the emergency response to the coronavirus pandemic and develop needed vaccines. The G20 secretariat said 1.9 billion US dollars had been donated by countries, philanthropic organisations and the private sector toward an $8 billion target set by the Global Preparedness Monitoring Board, but more funds were needed. A statement said additional funds were needed to pay for emergency response, diagnostics, treatments and the development, manufacturing and deployment of necessary vaccines. The Emirate of Dubai and the United Arab Emirates has reopened malls, cafes and restaurants and eased lockdown restrictions it initially imposed last month to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. The announcement of lifting coronavirus measures today is part of the Dubai government's first phase of easing of restrictions as the city marked the beginning of Ramadan. The wider UAE also announced that its nationwide coronavirus curfew would be shortened by two hours to now run from 10pm to 6am for the Muslim fasting month of Ramadan. Kuwait has called on its residents to follow the new curfew hours of 4pm to 8am for Ramadan, according to the local Arab Times. The Kuwait Minister of Interior emphasised the importance of following government directives to curb the spread of COVID-19 and said legal actions will be taken against curfew violators. The move comes as other countries in the region started to ease restrictions among the residents to revive their economies. Oman reported one new coronavirus death and 74 new infections, bringing the total number of virus-related fatalities in the country to nine and the number of confirmed cases to 1,790. 
The Ministry of Health announced that 35 of the new cases of Omani citizens, while 39 are people of other nationalities. So far, the number of recoveries in Oman is 325, according to the Ministry. Oman reported its first two cases of coronavirus on February the 24th, after two Omani women caught the disease on a trip to Iran. Since then, the country has imposed several strict measures to prevent the virus from spreading. The US government has pledged an $8 million aid package to Jordan in support of the country's fight against the coronavirus pandemic. The Jordan Times reported that most of the aid, 6.5 million, came from the State Department of Migration and Refugee Assistance to support refugees in the country, including providing them with health assistance, electricity, education and short-term cash dole out. Another 1.5 million was donated by the US Agency for International Development for the improvement of large-scale testing campaign in the country. A US diplomat said, Jordan is a close friend and invaluable US ally and officials are working together to prevent and treat infectious diseases at their source and to minimise their global impact. Iran's coronavirus death toll reached 5,574 today after 93 people died in the past 24 hours, according to the health ministry. The total number of infections in the country has reached 88,194 as severe US sanctions begin to slowly choke the economy, Iran on Monday reopened into city highways and major shopping centres to stimulate its economy, gambling that has brought under control the coronavirus outbreak, even as some fear it could lead to a second wave of infections. The fear has led those who can stay inside to rely on deliveries. The number of confirmed coronavirus cases in Germany needs to fall a few hundred today to enable further easing of lockdown measures, according to Robert Koch Institute of Infectious Diseases. Germany recorded 2,337 new cases to bring the total number of confirmed infections to 150,383 today. The reported death toll rose by 227 to 5,321. Chancellor Angela Merkel urged Germans to show endurance and discipline to get through the pandemic that is still at the beginning and called for a bigger European Union budget to support economic recovery in the bloc. Germany has the fifth highest COVID-19 caseload behind the United States, Spain, Italy and France, but has kept fatalities down after early and extensive testing. The worldwide death toll from the coronavirus pandemic crossed 190,000 today, with nearly two-thirds of the fatalities in Europe, according to an AFP tally compiled from official sources. A total of 190,089 people have died, and 2,698,733 have been infected since the virus emerged in China in December. The hardest-hit continent is Europe, with 116,221 deaths, 1,296,248 cases. The country with the most deaths is the United States with 49,963, followed by Italy with 25,549, Spain with 22,157, France with 21,856 and Britain with 18,738. The Arab coalition announces that the ceasefire in Yemen has been extended for a month. An earlier two-week ceasefire to allow the country to focus on containing a coronavirus outbreak expired yesterday. The ceasefire extension announced today comes at the start of the holy month of Ramadan. The Taliban have dismissed a government call for a Ramadan ceasefire in Afghanistan, saying a truce is not rational as they ramp up attacks on government forces. Afghan President Ashraf Ghani appealed to the militants to lay down their arms for the Islamic holy month that began today as the country battles the growing coronavirus pandemic. But the Taliban spokesman lambasted the government's offer, citing ongoing disagreements over a potential peace process and a delayed prisoner exchange as reasons to keep fighting. Under a landmark US-Taliban deal signed earlier this year, the Afghan government and insurgents were by now supposed to have concluded a prisoner swap and started talks, aimed about bringing about a comprehensive ceasefire. The Libyan National Army have arrested Egyptian Mohamed al Said, who is considered the most dangerous terrorist in Libya. Said was considered a trusted lieutenant of Hisham Ashmari, who was earlier executed for committing terrorist crimes in Egypt as he participated in the bombing of several Coptic churches. 
an Egyptian court sentenced Ashwari and 36 members of the Ansar Beit al Makhdes terror group to death over multiple crimes, including the assassination of policemen. As the spread of the coronavirus eases, people are gradually returning to work and pondering the impact it might have on their jobs. Europe's second biggest port is getting ready to test a device aimed at helping thousands of people employed there to respect social distancing. At the port of Antwerp in Belgium, where some 900 companies operate in an area the size of a small town, two teams of port workers will next month be wearing a new high-tech bracelet. Some European countries are designing contact tracing apps for mobile phones to help locate outbreak sources. These smart bracelets are worn like a watch and vibrate when they come within three metres of another smart bracelet worn by another person. However, the various apps are raising concerns about privacy and just how intrusive they might become once they're in people's homes or the workplace. Social distancing uh, and privacy is very important. With the basic feature and capabilities, we do not store any data. The only communication is between the two bracelets. There is no communication going out of the bracelets whatsoever. It's only there to keep people safe. And whenever there is a too close uh, proximity, they get warned and they step back. That's what it is. And this crisis has evaporated so many dogmas, uh, so many mindsets. Uh, we're in a new world. Huh? So let's make sure that we get the most positive outcomes out of this crisis. It has been too expensive not to. And in terms of safety, safety is a topic that's always top of mind. Certainly for, a, for an organization such as us, it's key. So if by using in an intelligent way technologies that we now have to use, but then we can use, then we, I'm pretty sure that we will continue along that path. Entrepreneurs in Pakistan are using online platforms to boost their businesses amid the coronavirus pandemic. One young chef is marketing her traditional homemade food online as shoppers go in search of dishes for iftar during the holy month of Ramadan. The arrival of Ramadan during the coronavirus pandemic has opened doors for internet entrepreneurs as many turn their businesses online using social media to earn a livelihood. Zareen takes her orders of her homemade Burmese, Gujarati and Pakistani food through social media. She says it's a way to empower female entrepreneurs like herself. Once Seren has made the food orders, they're sent by delivery driver to the customers. Seren hopes to eventually open a restaurant, as well as continuing with online orders.